Amazungu, Amazungu. They call us Mazungus there, white people or a foreigner. I went to Uganda out of obedience to God. I went with my friend Lindsay, who was very passionate about the country, passionate about the people. For me, I didn't feel that sense of great passion or burden for the people in Uganda. And even during my first week, I continually asked God, okay, God, give me a love for these people. I want to show you a little bit of Uganda. The land is very fruitful, very rich, very beautiful. When it rains there, everything kind of just stops, comes to a halt. People don't go out in the rain. Being there for five months really allowed me just to experience their culture, to learn about it, learn about the people, how they live, how they treat each other. Being down in Kabale with the children was another good experience for me. Being there with the kids at the school, with the kids at the orphanage, it was a really great time of, of learning, of growth, of serving, playing with the children, being with them. I got to teach Sunday school, just being with the children and experiencing their joy of life. I was staying in Hoima, which is more in West Uganda. And I stayed with Pastor Danny and Dovi, who are Filipino missionaries there. And that was a really great experience and being there with their four children. Also, I would go out to the village of Chimanyanga during the week, and I would stay out there with Dr. Martin and his family. And he has a clinic out there, so I would help him. And I really enjoyed just being out there in the village. No electricity, no running water. Medically, for me, I see the needs more so out in the villages. A lot of times people will travel 5 to 30 miles to reach the nearest clinic. When they're at church, they leave everything at the door. Yeah, life is hard and challenging, and there's many difficulties. But oftentimes, they'll just come into the presence of God and just really just rejoice and are just full of joy in the midst of difficulties in the midst of uncertainties. Some may not even know where they're going to get food for their family for the next week. But yet in the midst of that, they're choosing to trust God during those times. So the preaching there is very vocal, very loud. People share a lot of stories. You will acknowledge God in every area. For New Year's Eve, there was just thousands of people there. Uh, it was an incredible experience. They had several different preachers coming. They even had me get up and speak for a little bit, which is not uncommon for a visitor. I really saw the need for discipleship. During my time there, I got to disciple two ladies from church, and I just loved that time being one-on-one -on -one with them. The Great Commission really stood out to me where Jesus says in Matthew 28 to go and make disciples of all nations. But who's there to shepherd them, to disciple them along? And so I really see that as a big need there in Uganda. One of the main things I learned was the concept of being with. People would often just thank me for being with them or for being there. I would enter into someone's home and they would say, thank you for being here with us. And I was always a little confused because I hadn't even done anything. I was just there. And a lot of times that's what's needed, just being there. And they were just overjoyed that I would be there with them. I want to thank all those who helped support me in going to Uganda this time, whether financially or just being in prayer for me. And I don't know when God will bring me back to Uganda, but I know someday I will go back. And I would also want you to be part of that. After spending five months with them, I definitely have a a love for the people, a love for the country, a burden for the people, a burden for the country, but really just being where God has called me to be and being fully there. Leave the results to God, knowing that He's working in and through my life and then through the lives of those around me.